when it comes to our plumbing, we usually take an out of sight, out of mind approach. Once we don't see it anymore, we don't think about it anymore. But for the waste, now the initial flush is only the very beginning of its journey. After flowing through mazes of pipes below our city streets, waste ends up at a sewage treatment site where tanks and aerators process that waste into byproducts. But do you want to know a dirty little secret? These byproducts contain pathogens, heavy metals, and excess nitrogen that pollutes our landfills and forests. And any excess byproducts end up being incinerated, putting large amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So the question remains, how do we sustainably dispose of our waste's waste? Hello, I am your host, Mike Lake, and in today's preview, I will be talking with Dr. Rob Stevenson, Chief Technology Officer of Eagle Ridge Innovations, a company that has developed their very own micro pop technology to liquefy cells of waste byproducts and effectively transform our sewage treatment processes into a more sustainable industry. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, President and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Hello and welcome, Rob. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. And of course, I do want to welcome all of our guests, whether you're listening or viewing, thank you for tuning in. Um, today, I'm so excited to talk to, to introduce you to and talk with Dr. Rob Stevenson, the Chief Technical Officer of Eagle Ridge Innovations. This is a company that has developed a technology that effectively eliminates biosolids from wastewater, carving the path to sustainable waste management for all. In, in, in short, we're going to be talking a lot about sludge. So, Rob, tell us, how is it that you became passionate about sludge? <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Um, when I finished graduate school, we were looking for the next biggest challenge of wastewater treatment. That's what I did my, my doctorate in. Uh, and we found that the next biggest challenge for wastewater treatment in terms of environmental impacts, in terms of cost, is sludge. And so sludge is something I think not much of a, not many of us talk about. We don't think much about. Um, I'm not even sure many people understand what we're talking about now. So we all contribute it to contribute to it. So uh, tell us, what is this sludge and, and how should we be thinking about it? Well, sludge is basically your poo one generation removed. So when 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 you flush the toilet, there's a whole network of pipes and pumps and everything else that's going to direct all your waste to a centralized wastewater treatment plant. Sometimes it'll be one service in the city and sometimes it'll be many. And it, that wastewater treatment plant itself treats the treats the the sewage, and in treating it, produces this waste byproduct. So basically, the solids they can separate, as well as the solids that are formed, and those solids collectively are called sludge. And and other than being messy, yeah. <laughs> it, it can actually cause serious uh, problem in terms of how to manage it, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's a very costly uh, thing to manage. It's probably the largest item on your property tax bill. Um, and it's, 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 it's gross. It's, it's mucky stuff. Um, it can be disease causing if you're not careful with it. Uh, and it gets hauled away and either land applied to, to farmland. It gets burnt in an incinerator or goes to a landfill and, and continues to rot. So none of those options are, are terribly attractive. Um, and it's it's a problem for every city. It's really it, it's a problem, but it's also the result of cleaning cleaning the wastewater. And that you know the industry does that tremendously well. Um, and, you know probably the major uh, improvement in, in disease uh, in mitigating disease it does that very well. But it has this byproduct, and the byproduct is is kind of a a secret outside of the industry. And can you give can us you a sense of just how much sludge are we talking about, either in a particular community, like average community or globally or whatever? Well, I guess a simple way to think about it is for every 100,000 people that a wastewater treatment plant serves, they generate about 100,000 tons of this sludge. So it's, it's 
a big, big number. Um, in many cases, that, that seemed to be hidden because often um, the trucks that hauled it away from the treatment plant only operate at night. No one wants it in the neighborhood when they're when they're not uh, not sleeping, and they haul it far away. In Vancouver, they haul it several hundred kilometers to uh, to a mine and dispose of it in. On, they call it mine reclamation. In other cases, they'll burn it, but it's a it's a largely hidden and very ugly problem. And give me, I mean, this sounds, frankly, it sounds expensive to deal with this. Um, just how expensive is it to, to manage this process that you're describing? Um, well, for every wastewater treatment plant, roughly half, up to half the capital cost of the plant itself, and also up to about half the operating cost of the plant itself um, is, to, is spent in managing sludge. And the, the problem is, is massive. Years ago, sludge was dumped into the ocean. And we decided that wasn't such a great idea. <clears throat> so now the sludge gets moved around. Um, I know for a while, New York was taking the sludge to Florida. Ireland was taking the sludge to Poland. Um, so it's all over the map and it's a very expensive thing to manage. Um, and when I say half of the operating cost and half of the capital cost, um, just for a city like, or for a country like the United States or Canada, this amounts to many, many millions, if not billions of dollars every single year. Amazing. All right, so clearly it's a big problem. It's mm -hmm. a messy problem. Um, yeah. it, it exists. There's nothing we can do about stopping it from being created, but there is well, something we stop eating. You can stop eating. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and in the end, there is something we can do about how we manage it, though. Uh, yes, and, and that's where Eagle Ridge comes into play. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about Eagle Ridge and the technology you've developed. Yeah, um, so half this, we, we actually a little bit misspoke about we can eliminate all the biosolids. We can remove about half of them. And the half that we remove are the bacteria that are formed when the wastewater is being treated. And that material is called waste activated sludge and they're individual microbes produced at a massive scale. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we can take those microbes and basically crush them or blow them apart using a uh, technology that's the same kind of device that homogenizes milk or turns tomato into ketchup or peanuts into peanut butter. It's called a homogenizer. So we take that material and we basically took, take these little, little blobs of jello in a plastic bag and blow apart the plastic bag to release the inside guts of the bacteria. When we do that, it allows the wastewater treatment plants now that turn some of that, some of that material to natural gas, but not very effectively, it can turn that far more effectively, generating far more natural gas. So we have a renewable source of natural gas called renewable natural gas. So by doing that, it means that we have far, far less solids to dispose of, and it makes the existing infrastructure, those are called anaerobic digesters, it makes that existing infrastructure work far more efficiently. And so that's the process. What is I guess is this something you mix in? Is it a is it a machine that it runs through? What what is the? Yeah, the high pressure homogenizer is basically a, a a very powerful pump, and it pushes the sludge through a valve, and that valve um, causes the sludge to actually hit a surface of the valve at almost the speed of sound, and it's like, a little bit like bugs going splat on a windshield. The bugs go splat, the guts of the bacteria are each opened up, and suddenly. The bacteria that live in the, the the anaerobic digester that makes the renewable natural gas now it's something it can eat. It can it basically turns material that's um, that's hard to digest into fast food, and it can digest it far faster and far more completely, and that produces dramatically more of the biogas, dramatically less of the solids. Ultimately, there's still going to be some solids remaining of the of the uh, the, the solids that we separate that that don't involve forming the bacteria but we can take the bacteria and effectively blow them apart. And by blowing them apart, allows the digestion to work better. And, and what's the, the length of time to process? Ordinarily, these digesters hold onto the, onto the sludge for up to 30 days. And because of the amount of sludge we generate, these, these tanks have to be massive. As I mentioned to you earlier, Michael, the, uh, there's a treatment plant in Los Angeles that has 40, sorry, 26 digesters, each 40 million gallons, each costing of $40 million. So massive, massive scale. Uh, and and what, we, what we can do by blowing apart the sludge is we can allow these digesters to work far faster. And so these, these treatment plants were built on the side, on, on the outskirts of town. 
Um, the town is subsequently built around it over the last several decades, and there's no place to expand. So we're a little bit hooped that way. And if we can get more capacity out of what's installed already, then we're all going to benefit. Wow. So it, as we're all uh, flushing the toilet, um, we're all part to part of the problem. Um, sure. But no, as you said, I mean, knowing that this is probably the biggest part of our property tax bill. Sure. We're all paying the price. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So when it, the price tags you just talked about are enormous, um, the, the ability for you to to not only reduce the the threat of this sludge, mm -hmm. but to actually reduce the cost of dealing with it is it's a double win. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the you know we're a little while ago when uh, talking about how can we create more energy, um, the infrastructure already exists, exists in the wastewater treatment plants, and what we have to do is get a little bit smarter about how to take advantage of some basic science. And the basic science is that bacteria eat liquids, not solids, and by feeding sludge that hasn't been processed, we're, we're kind of it's like going to the subway and having a sandwich without taking the wrapper off. Take the wrapper off so you have fast food, not slow food. And by making it fast food, it allows what we've got to work dramatically better. And in the end, what's the final outcome? Well, the final outcome is we have more gas to produce or more renewable natural gas. Basically, it's called biogas. We can refine it to make sure. you know, pure methane natural gas. And we have um, clean water. Uh, we still have some of the biosolids remaining of the primary sludge that we don't process, but we can decrease the amount of sludge quite dramatically. Um, it does require some other additions to the plant, for which has been a holdup from what we've done, but we've we've developed those additions. It's mostly dealing with nitrogen and phosphorus, and there are solutions available to make that work. Um, but at the whole end of the day, we can produce far less um, biosolids for disposal. And even though they are termed beneficial use um, by the industry as a kind of a spin doctoring, um, no one wants any more of them. So we can produce a fair bit less of them at dramatically lower cost. So another another question to you about this here. And sorry, I'm, I'm you know harping on it, but I mean this is such a dramatic win for any community. Right. Um, what what is the holdup in implementing such a technology? Well, if there's anything that happens at a wastewater treatment plant and things sometimes go bump in the night, people don't stop flushing the toilets. So you can't stop the flow. So that makes the industry very risk averse. So the industry consequently has built things large and big and fail safe. And the appetite for innovation is, 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 is suffered that way. You don't want to be the person who um, made a decision on a, on a technology and suddenly everyone's calling you saying, you know, our toilets are backing up. <laughs> so we can't go there. So the, the, the appetite for risk has been minimal. Um, and this is a, a relatively uh, new technology, and and therefore there is there's some who's going to take that jump. Um, as as I as I mentioned as well, um, by process, processing the sludge this way and any other ways to improve the the digestibility of the sludge, we create the other issue in terms of managing the nitrogen phosphorus, and so we've had to come up with solutions for that as well, complementary solutions, you know. Um, but uh, so it requires a whole almost ecosystem of solutions to make the whole system work. But there is a fantastic opportunity to to create natural gas and decrease the amount of waste sludge for disposal. And I think we ought to seize on it. So this is a question I ask every guest. And unfortunately, our time is already starting to wrap up here. Sure. But I mean, as you say, the flow of, of this is not going to stop. Um, now or into the future. So 10, 20, 50 years from now, mm -hmm. if every wastewater treatment facility in, in the world is using this technology, Eagle Ridge's innovation, um, what, what does that actually mean? Like, can you paint us the picture of what does it mean to me, the, the sure. individual, or to the planet, or whatever? Sure. So wastewater treatment plants are the largest potential source of renewable natural gas anywhere on the planet. And the infrastructure is already set. So if we make that infrastructure work better, we'd be far better off. 
So in the future, what do I look at? I look at wastewater treatment plants working far better than they do right now, taking advantage of what they've got and just applying some basic uh, first year university um, microbiology to it. Um, and that's going to provide uh, more renewable natural gas, less sludge for disposal, uh, as well will rec be recovering the nitrogen and phosphorus for use as useful fertilizers. Uh, the systems will be working within the existing footprint of what they have right now. And you maybe won't notice it as much in your property tax bill because costs will come down. You mentioned the, the production of you know natural gas. Um, how much how much natural gas can one expect from a traditional facility? Um, the problem is that, that question is that the tra traditional facilities vary hugely by by capacities and some treatment plants service uh, 60,000 people and some some serve 6 million people. So there there is a it, it is the largest typically a wastewater treatment plants the largest consumer of electricity in in any city uh, consumer of electricity and heat and so we can displace that heat requirement largely displace the elect electricity requirement and still have excess natural gas to feed back into the grid so consumers can use natural gas that's been produced from 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 organic material as opposed to using a fossil fuel so if if a person living in any community mm -hmm. has interest in learning more about this or more importantly maybe urging their their local government to to seek a, uh, the implementation of this kind of solution or if a wastewater treatment individual uh, wants to to learn more to to explore implementing it how, how does anybody uh, do that it, what's sure. the best way to learn more just google eagle ridge innovations corp that's the easiest way to find us eagle ridge eagle ridge innovation corp fantastic yeah. Rob, thank you so much for the work you're doing. I I feel like you're the unsung hero of uh, you know it's, it's, uh, city management, but um, obviously the work is important. Um, we've talked more about sludge than I've ever talked about in my life. Um, Great dinner conversation, by the way. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Um, but thank you so much also for for being a, a guest on this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. It's been my pleasure. I'm an environmentalist who got the skills to try to do something about it. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guest today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.